Good morning, Coleman. Thank you for tuning in to Coleman Today. I'm your host, Katie Spicer, and today is Thursday, May 16th, 2024. We have a lot to look at in local news today, including information on Coleman Regional's OB expansion, the CDC's prom, and a look at Pet of the Week. All of this plus sports weather and more, but for now, let's dive into the top stories happening in Coleman Today. Coleman Regional is expanding obstetric and nursery services with the addition of a fourth OBGYN physician, six neonatologists, and four neonatal nurse practitioners to its medical staff. The new neonatology providers will offer around-the-clock care to babies born at Coleman Regional beginning this summer. Neonatology is a medical specialty for the care of newborn babies, especially those who are critically ill and or premature. Having this higher level of care available at Coleman Regional will enable the hospital to transition its nursery from a level one well baby nursery to a level two special care care nursery. The Alabama Department of Public Health defines a level two nursery as a specialty nursery, which includes equipment and staff that can support slightly underdeveloped or somewhat sick babies who are expected to get well quickly. Chief Nursing Officer Charna Brown said the maternity nursing team has some of the most experienced nurses in our health system. Becoming a special care nursery is a natural progression for them and their capabilities and services to grow. Dr. Hannah Hightower, who is board certified in both pediatrics and neonatal perinatal medicine, will serve as medical director for the Coleman Regional Nursery. Renovations of the hospital's nursery were recently completed to provide patients and the new neonatology team an updated spacious area that will better accommodate the level 2 special care nursery. Coleman Regional's OB expansion started last summer with the addition of three OBGYN physicians to its employed physician group. The physicians had already been delivering babies at Coleman Regional through an independent practice, but with changes to that multi-specialty clinic, they needed a new home. Vice President of Physician Services, Lisa Courtney, said that these doctors are well established in Coleman and care for thousands of patients, and that it was important that they did not leave the community, so they worked to create an opportunity for them to stay. When Dr. Lance Justice relocated his practice from Marshall County earlier this month, he became the fourth OBGYN physician to join the hospital's employed physician group in less than one year. The health system's decision to invest and grow the OB program is in stark contrast to the recent OB closures in three Alabama hospitals. The expanded services will help ensure that women in these areas continue to have local access to prenatal care and a hospital-based birth center with advanced newborn care. With population growth in the region expected to continue, the health system continues to recruit physicians and other health care professionals to help meet the obstetric needs of multiple communities it serves. Next up, the Coleman City Council on Monday approved resolutions to complete several years of pavement repairs and upgrades at Coleman Regional Airport and paved the way for future expansion of facilities and services. The council voted to enter contracts with Goodwin Mills Cowwood for engineering services for the reconstruction of the apron and hangers to be constructed on a new taxiway for which a timetable has not been set. Coleman Regional Airport in March received a congressional allocated grant in the amount of $4,177,000 for the apron reconstruction project through the U.S. Department of Transportation grants in aid for airport program. Coleman was one of only six grants received in the state of Alabama under this funding allocation. The council also approved a resolution to enter into an agreement with Terracon Consultants Incorporated to perform borings on Graham Street Southwest. They held a first reading of the ordinance to annex property located at 2100 Main Avenue Southwest into the city limits of Coleman as a B2 business district. The council took no action and can vote on the measure at its next meeting. To wrap things up, the council set a public hearing on June 24th at 7 p.m. for an ordinance to rezone the Elrod property located on 309 Olive Street Southwest behind Lynn Garden on Olive Street from residential to business. And to wrap up our top stories, two career tech students from Coleman High School's Educators and Training Program, Anna Hill and Maddie Doyle, received first place at Future Teachers of Alabama State Conference for their submission to the Grow Your Own Video Lesson Competition. The pair won against more than 50 submissions throughout the state. The competition involved the Coleman High School students creating a potential lesson plan, preparing a lesson, providing instruction, and evaluating results. The Future Teachers of Alabama organization started the Grow Your Own initiative to provide school systems with additional opportunities to focus on activities that promote teaching as a career and encourage students to strongly consider the field of education as a future. The students were recognized at the Alabama State Department of Education board meeting on May 9th. Senator Garland Gudger invited Hill, Doyle, and their instructor, Ben Heatherly, to the Alabama Senate, where they were recognized for their accomplishment. Now that we have the top stories out of the way, we're going to take a quick break before returning with sports. Discover what's buzzing in Coleman with Community Matters where every story pops off the page with local flair. It's the magazine that's got the inside track on what's now, what's new, and who's who. Get the lowdown on Top Eats and 411 on recipes that'll turn up your summer cooking game. 
Relive our local team's triumphs on the sports fields and pencil in summer's hottest events for fun the whole family will love. Get your copy of Community Matters at the Coleman Tribune, any of the local businesses on screen, or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome back. Now it's time to find out what's going on in the world of sports. Let's get today's sports segment started with some college news. Wallace State Community College's softball team earned its fourth consecutive conference title and 16th overall title at this year's NJCAA Division I ACCC South District Softball Tournament held at Veterans Park in Alabaster. The Lions swept the tournament, winning three straight games to claim the title. Pitcher Katie Simon was named the tournament MVP. The Lions went into the tournament as the number one seed and soundly defeated Northwest Shoals Community College 11-2 in the first round of play. Katie Simon pitched all six innings for the matchup, striking out 11 of the 23 batters she faced. Laura Lee Wheeler drove in eight runs with her two hits for the game, including a grand slam. Jesse Taylor and Tessa Ward each recorded RBIs in the game as well. Their next game against Sneed State was a little more challenging, but the Lions came out on top 5-3, to three, with Lily Boswell getting the win and Emily Simon earning the save. Jaden Foster and Tessa Ward each earned a hit and a home run in the game, and Caroline Carton and Bailey Roos each added RBIs as well. In the final round, Wallace State shut out Southern Union 3-0, to zero, with Katie Simon getting the win. Taylor's home run, combined with a fielder's choice and an RBI from Roos, was all the team needed to clinch the win. Along with the MVP Katie Simon, Carton, Ward, and Wheeler all were named to the all-tournament team. Roos, Wheeler, and Katie Simon also earned first-team all-conference honors. The Lions will make their 16th appearance at the NJCAA Division I Softball World Series May 20th through 25th at Chicolo Park in Oxford. Live games will be broadcast from the NJCAA network. Auburn's men's golf is headed to the 2024 NCAA Championship following a sixth consecutive tournament title for the nation's number one team. The Tigers delivered an electric 20 under final round Wednesday at the NCAA Baton Rouge Regional to headline the tournament's five squads moving forward. The 30 advancing teams from six regional sites will cover on Carlsbad, California for a shot at the national title May 24th through 29th. For the week, the Tigers shot a team score of 21 under par, winning the regional by eight strokes. It is the first time in program history with regional victories in back-to-back -back seasons. Auburn's top individual for the tournament was junior Brendan Valdez. He finished tied for second with a final score of six under. His surge up the leaderboard was assisted by a clutch six under 66 in the final round. He made one bogey on the day, 14, and birdied seven times on holes 2, 6, 7, 11, 13, 15, and 17. Auburn's freshman duo of Jackson Coyvin and Josiah Gilbert both ended the tournament at 5-under, good for 5th place finishes. Coyvin made 14 pars and 4 birdies Wednesday to finish with a 68. With 164 birdies on the year, he now stands tied with Michael Johnson's 2015-16 season, single season program record. Gilbert cruised to his third top 5 finish of the season with a final round of 67. He played his first 11 holes at 6-under before making a couple of bogeys on the back 9. However, he picked up one more birdie on 17 to finish the day. Senior J.M. Butler delivered a 5-under 67 Wednesday to surpass Jovan Rabula and set a new school record with 46 career rounds in the 60s. That covers sports for today, but make sure to check with the Coleman Tribune each day for the latest in sports coverage from across the area. We'll be back after this message. Hello and welcome back to Coleman Today. Now it's time to speed things up with our news rundown. Four stories in under four minutes. ALDOT crews will continue patching Thompson Road in the immediate area of I-65 exit 325 in Hartzell today, Thursday, May 16th. Work will take place from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Motorists are advised to use alternate routes or expect delays. Additionally, the paint crew will be striping recently patched segments of I-65 in Morgan County on Thursday. Please expect a single lane closure for this operation. Students at the Child Development Center rocked the gym Tuesday as they gathered for their annual prom day. Students, parents, and teachers alike all took the dance floor to show off their moves, while others clapped and encouraged each to dance like there's no tomorrow. This is truly one of Coleman's most significant proms, as all had smiles and laughed while dancing the day away. 
This week's Coleman Tribune Pet of the Week is Maverick, a male husky that is approximately two years old. He is described as a medium energy, leash savvy young male who understands personal space. While at the kennel, he has exhibited mistaken manners. He is exceptionally quiet at the time you spend with Maverick cannot be overstated by his personality as it continues to flourish. He is a water bug and loves spending time in the kiddie pool, but you rarely see him without his small toy tomato. Maverick's demeanor would be perfectly set for someone seeking a companion, a therapy, and willing to take hikes. Please take time to check out Maverick and all the other pets up for adoption at the Coleman County Animal Shelter. Seats are still available for two upcoming travel experiences offered by the Wallace Tate Community College Alumni Association. A day trip to see Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat musical and four-day, three-night autumn getaway tour of Kentucky. On July 17th, the Alumni Association will travel to Montgomery to take in a matinee showing of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat musical presented by the Alabama Shakespeare Festival. The cost is $150 per person and includes transportation, a southern buffet lunch at the Plantation House restaurant, premium Zone A seating, at the show at all taxes and gratuities. A chartered bus will depart from Wallace State at 9.15 a.m. and is expected to return around 6.30 that evening. The deadline to register is June 26. To register and for more information, visit www.wsccalumni.org slash joseph24. Now for a quick break before we look at the weather ahead and pay our respect with obituaries. I'll be right back after this quick message. Welcome back. Let's take a moment to pause and remember those who have lost their lives this week as we turn to obituaries. Matthew James Baker. Matthew James Baker, age 43, of Coleman, Alabama, passed away on Sunday, April 28, 2024. Memorial service will be Saturday, May 18th at Logan Junior High Community Center at 1 p.m. Reverend John McCoy will be officiating. That finishes up obituaries for today. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his friends and family. Now let's take a look at today's weather forecast. Today it will be sunny with a high near 83. Expect a calm wind becoming northwest around 5 miles per hour in the afternoon. This evening there's a 30% chance of showers after 1 a.m. There will be increasing clouds with a low around 62 and a calm wind becoming east to southeast around 5 miles per hour. On Friday there will be showers with thunderstorms also possible after 1 p.m. The high will be near 76 with a south to southeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour and gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. The chance of precipitation is 80%. Friday night, showers are likely and possibly a thunderstorm before 1 a.m., then a chance of showers and thunderstorms after 1 a.m. It will be mostly cloudy with a low around 64 and a south wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. The chance of precipitation is 70%. That concludes our broadcast for today. Thank you for joining us on Coleman Today. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. I'm Katie Spicer, and from all of us here at Coleman Today, have a great day, Coleman.